It's been a while since I looked at fake flash storage devices, but there are some out there that I haven't covered before, so let's take a look at one of those today. Now, in case you're completely new to all of this, there are a huge number of fake flash storage devices out there for sale on Wish, eBay, Amazon, and other marketplaces. In very brief summary, when you plug these things in, they lie to your computer about their actual capacity, allowing you to send them more files than they can actually store. And your data may appear to be saved on them, but the file contents will be lost. I had a few comments to the effect that my old videos are now out of date because cheap 2TB storage devices are now available everywhere. Sadly, that's incorrect, and all of the examples that people gave me on this are just more of the same scam. Prices of genuine terabyte flash storage have come down since my previous videos on this subject, but they're still expensive. Here's a genuine example with an appropriate price. And here's a small gallery of fakes. Some of the fakes have actually gone up in price, presumably not just for profit, but to appear a bit more authentic and believable. Here's one I bought back in August 2020 to look at in this video, and I sort of got sidetracked from uploading this, but here we are now. The device arrived in a small cardboard box that does indeed claim to be a two terabyte hard drive. It's styled as a slim removable hard drive, and the form factor is that of a device that might be intended to contain an M2 storage device with a USB interface. But what will it actually be? At 57 pounds, it was too cheap to be real. Inside we find the drive itself, which is a nicely machined piece of aluminium, together with a USB-C cable. So it is indeed a USB-C device on the outside. I get a lot of comments saying it's dangerous to plug an unknown USB device into my computer, and that's true. There are risks. I'm mitigating those risks in a variety of ways, but also I'm choosing to accept a level of risk, so hopefully you don't have to. Anyway, plugging the thing in gives us what appears to be a 2 terabyte volume, and we can copy files to it. Great! So have we actually got lucky and got a two terabyte device here? Not at all. This is a fake and we should be able to prove it by performing a write test. While the write test is ongoing, let me make it really clear once again that checking the properties, formatting or repartitioning the device will not reveal the fraud. I had hoped to demonstrate this in detail with this device, but I'll explain more about that later in the video. The write test failed. The drive simply stopped responding before we'd written more than a dozen gigabytes. The USB device is still recognized, but it doesn't show any storage volumes at all. Now, some people will argue that this is only proof that the thing is faulty, not that it's fake. Okay then, let's tear it down and take a look inside. I unscrewed the little end plates off the casing and I was sort of hoping it would open in half, but it appears to be a single piece of machined metal. The device inside occupied less than half of the internal space and it was glued in, so it wasn't just going to slide out. So I tore into it with pliers and cutters, destroying any hope of a refund, to reveal a really sad looking little PCB, with a regular USB type A plug on the end that was facing inside the case. Pulling it apart further and unfortunately doing a little more damage to it in the process, what we find is that this is not actually a USB-C device at all. It's a USB 2 flash storage board that has a small USB-C socket board hot glued to the tail end, with some thin wires jumping the four standard USB connectors over to their corresponding pins on the USB-C interface board. This works because USB-C is backward compatible and the standard USB pins exist within the broader set of connectors for USB-C. Once we scrape away the huge blobs of hot glue, we can better see what we've actually got here. The flash chip on one side of the board doesn't have much to identify it, just the text B17A 2022, which didn't look up to anything relevant in my searches. But for sure, this isn't two terabytes of storage because at the time this was made, that capacity was not available in a single chip package. And in case it's not obvious, when those things do become available, they don't enter the market at the cheap end. So this is definitely fake, but unfortunately it looks as if we won't ever discover what the actual capacity of the onboard flash was. My guess is that it would have been less than 40 gigabytes. But while we're here, I want to address the important matter of why so many people are confused about this fraud, and why some of those people doggedly refuse to accept that they are fake. To do that, we need to understand how these devices work in general. A flash storage peripheral consists of two main components. Firstly, the storage itself, which is this large chip here. It's non-volatile flash memory. It stores the data. 
but it doesn't have any USB connectivity of its own. That's the job of the other, smaller chip on the other side of the board. This is the controller. It knows how to get data in and out of the flash chip, and it knows how to communicate with a host machine via USB. It's been programmed to know how much storage it has available, and the properties of that storage so that it can deal with things like fragmentation and wear levelling all on its own. This controller chip is actually like a tiny computer in its own right. It actively manages the storage of data that the host computer sends it. The host computer never has any direct access to the physical storage. It's all mediated and managed by the onboard controller. So, when you query the device properties, or when you format or partition the drive, your computer isn't looking at the storage at all. It's interacting with the controller and trusting what that controller says. Except that in the case of these fake flash devices, the controller's been reprogrammed to report that it has two terabytes of storage, when it actually doesn't. Your computer just trusts it and sends it files. The controller may actually attempt to store these in complete earnest, except that it pushes them into addresses that simply don't exist. The file names and metadata are typically stored at the lower part of the memory, so the files look as if they are there. But when you ask for them back, at best you get a file with the right name and size, but all of the contents are zeros. So if we knew the actual storage capacity of the device, would it be safe to use it if we just never fill it more than that? I'm going to say no, because as I mentioned earlier, one of the functions of the onboard controller is to manage fragmentation and wear levelling. So when you save something to this device, there's simply no guarantee it will be placed in the real storage area. And even if it does, the defragmentation algorithm might move something else to put it there, and that other thing might be lost. So how do you tell if you have a fake 2TB flash device? Well, the simplest way is your wallet. If you bought one and you didn't think it was a bit expensive, you almost certainly got a fake. But some of the fakes are expensive too, so whilst a low price is a clear indication of a fake, a high price is not a guarantee that the thing is genuine. So the only way to be certain is to do a write test with a program like H2TestW. There will be links in the video description to a whole range of testing resources and information. For me, I now only buy flash memory direct from a brand I trust. The number of fakes out there is just huge, and I'm also starting to hear reports that they found their way into physical retail stores. So the old thing about being able to trust a bricks and mortar store is also eroding. So whilst this video doesn't contain all of the deep technical testing I intended to do, I hope it's still been useful. If you've spotted a device you suspect is fake and you'd like me to investigate, then please do post a link in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.